Welcome back to Never Tell Us the Odds, and thank you for joining us for our recap and reflection of the third episode of Bad Batch, The Replacement. After the world-defining roller coaster of the first two episodes, the execution of Order 66, discovering Omega's existence, the betrayal and defection of Crosshair, and the remaining Bad Batch going on the run, this episode almost feels relaxed. The story is split between Crosshair being given command of an experimental group of non-clone troopers on the one hand, and the Bad Batch crash landing their shuttle due to a blown capacitor on the other. Now the story drops some fairly blatant hints about how the rest of the galaxy views clones. The comments that are made at Crosshair's expense uh, belie a greater prejudice. This culminates in one of his squad committing treason and going against orders, and well that winds up going about as well as you would expect it to go when you go up against Crosshair. After all, good soldiers follow orders. The second storyline is used as a framing device to help define Omega's relationship with the squad. However, the MacGuffin of the missing power capacitor comes across as kind of forced, and the danger the clothes are in just never feels real to me. Um, whether you're worried about them finding enough power to escape or about Omega's adventure in the Dragon Tunnels, the entire story just feels like a low-stakes adventure. Uh, to me, this episode was definitely more filler than killer. One of the first big takeaways of this episode was really Wrecker's kind of interaction with his head injury or maybe something else possibly going on. I think because I think because especially since it happened shortly after they talked about the the, the scanner that mm -hmm. Tech was trying to build, it um, raises the question: Did he really just whack his head against something? In which case he's in pain, but he kept bringing it up. So does that mean it jarred something in the chip? We don't understand why the chip does not work. Yeah. In the Bad Batch, so it may sound weird to say physical trauma could activate it, but maybe physical trauma did. It, exactly, and I think they're doing a really good job of showing how. Um, this is an important part of the story because throughout the, the story you see that Tech is mm -hmm. working on a device to, mm -hmm. to read the, their brain waves and what's going on with the chips. Right. Um, so that could be the two sides of the coin, you know, like they're showing the solution coming forward, but they're also showing another problem that might be coming down the line with, with Wrecker. Right, and talking about solutions, also I have to wonder too, does that mean that if they find a way to, to, to modify or impact the chip, mm -hmm. will they use that on Crosshair? And then Crosshair will wind up rejoining the Bad Batch and Will he be upset that somebody took his room? Less of a big takeaway, more of a minor takeaway, but what really struck me is that poor gonk droid yes. that keeps showing up. I mean, like we saw him be used as a weight. The, and He's a pillow. sliding <laughs> down at one point or anything like that. I mean, that guy just can't catch any breaks. Yeah. Um, and so I'm wondering, is he going to turn into sort of like a comic relief? You know how like uh, mm -hmm. Disney films sometimes like when in doubt hurt the animal. Yeah. I don't mean to hurt the animal, but it's like you'll have like, you know, Yago the parrot in a lab yeah, no, and I guess, yeah, something, you know, some yes, comic yeah. relief animal. Yeah. Is that what the power droid is going to wind up turning yeah. into? And it's like every major TV series, movie they've ever done has a main droid. And they don't have a droid yet. So uh -huh. another big takeaway, I thought, was the, the cameoans. The storyline going on there that they explored a little bit at the end of the episode, where you heard them talking about how they need to get um, one of the members back from Clone Force 99 at least, because they are the ones who they want to copy DNA from to create this new batch of clone super soldiers. Mm -hmm. um, they realize that the, the clones they were providing before, while good, you know, clearly are just don't meet the, the you know, cost benefit analysis that mm -hmm. the new um, empire has, has implemented. Um, and then it also seems to imply that maybe there's, there's a cost too that either the sample they had is degrading because it has been three or four years. Mm -hmm. Well, more than that since they took it from Django, at least a couple of years since they had Django yeah. around. Um, so they need a sort of fresher copy. They need mm -hmm. to take it from Clone Force 99, and they, um, it was weird for me to sort of still see them in a, a sympathetic light, because when I think about it, how they were portrayed in the movies, even, even in the Clone Wars, mm -hmm. not like they were Joseph Mengele, but they just seemed to be like, you know, we're cloning stuff, the, our, our clones are just property, they're not people, and yeah. so it's weird to me to actually have a soft spot for them now, yeah. and think about, you know, kind of what's going to happen. Yeah, and it's, um, and, that, and that whole, and that even seems like there's two sides to the the cameo ones. Um, you know, you have the main guy who's telling uh, the one lady we keep seeing interacting with the clones who seems to be in charge of the, you know, maybe the genetic side of mm -hmm. things. Um, and you see her after getting the instructions from him kind of have this, like, look on her face, like, I'm not sure I want to, you know, she might end up, my, my, my guess is that she'll end up highlighting more with 
the Clone Force ninety nine and helping him out in some way. Ah, so maybe like you know, maybe the season will end or something where like they'll do a Darren Rand you know, they leave with her and mm-hmm. then you know, or something of that nature. Yeah. So the other thing that struck me in terms of takeaways from the episode, and you can argue we're a little bit late with this because it actually happened in episode two, but we didn't notice it until episode three, mm-hmm. is it is so different in the sense that, you know, the Clone Wars we watched for years began with that sort of newsreel style footage, you know, in the galaxy today, you know, know, Obi-Wan and Ahsoka Tano approach Saluka Mai, little do they know, blah, 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 blah. And like, while yes, there were some real stakes and such going on there, it sort of gave a, you know, I don't want to say jaunty, but I don't know how else to put it. This is what their next adventure is. Whereas this is very clearly just the Bad Batch. And it's silent. And then all of a sudden, boom, you jump right into it. And to me, that also is really showing the fact that, I mean, yes, the animation style is similar. We carry on the same characters. But this is a completely new chapter and not a continuation. Yeah. And I I just think the, you know, my final takeaway is the, um, you know, first of all, the juxtaposition they're creating um, between the two groups of, of, you know, the clones now and this new as we aptly named them, the Batter Batch. But we did find out their official name was um, something or, or, Mantle. Or, or actually not their official name, but they're, part, they're the pilot program for that's Project right. War Mantle. Project War Mantle, that's what it was. So. Yeah, so that's I thought it was very fascinating. They're really, really showing that. Um, you know, as Omega gets her new quarters at the exact mm-hmm. same time, you see the the new um, you know group uh, with Crosshair coming back to their new quarters, which is the old Bad Batch's quarters. Mm-hmm. Um, Just cleaned up and not smelling quite so bad. Exactly. But, um, yeah, so. Uh, so, I mean, I'm not quite as secure in this prediction as uh, Brendan is in his, but one thing that I think is going to happen, actually I would love to see, would um, how we saw one member of Crosshair Squad actually... Uh, die in this one uh, we didn't even know his name so in that way he was mm-hmm. almost like a red shirt he was a, so a Star Trek reference I so I think they're gonna keep bringing in people like we'll they'll flesh out the rest of the squad we we'll get names for them yep. but they'll always have one person who shows up who's a new person who doesn't get a name and like every couple of episodes they just get killed either by crosshair or by something happening yeah you know um, and I don't think they're ever gonna have you know some alien shouting oh my god he killed Kenny but I think that's something that could you know add just a little bit of both the high stakes and humor at the same time to it. Yeah, absolutely. Because it definitely seems like this series is going down a darker path. My favorite scene has to be when um, they're coming down from the, for the crash landing on mm-hmm. the planet and Wrecker is just repeating, we're all going to die, we're all going to die, we're all going to die. And someone gives him a little nudge and is like, Wrecker, Omega's here. And he quickly changes it to repeating, <laughs> like, we're going to be fine, we're going to be fine, we're going to be fine. Um, I, I thought that was a great, you know, lively, lively moment. Mm-hmm. Um, and it just really highlights a lot of the, you know, team building they're doing currently mm-hmm. of um, the, the new Bad Batch. Yeah. Um, and that's why I loved it. It just really kind of encapsulates all of that. I think that is great. Um, unfortunately, that is better than my favorite scene, because I think it's a great one. My favorite scene, especially because I'm going to sound like a broken record compared to how I started this uh, this particular recap, but it really was, again, it's Crosshair and his and his new squad in the troop ship as they're coming down, and the unnamed guy, who later met a bad fate, is like, why, why is there a clone in charge? And what's going on? And why should they be here? And why are clones so good? And you can sort of, you sort of watch that you know, in between watching Crosshair's expression and just the narrative value of what that guy is saying. You're like, oh. <laughs> he is not long for this world. I mean, all of a sudden, the luck lords are like, nope, you're going to buy it next chance you get. Well, we hope you guys enjoyed the episode, and we look forward to talking to you guys next week and exploring further the Bad Batch. Um, in the meantime, remember, never, never tell, tell us the, the odds. odds.